Hello, hello. I'm happy to welcome Joanne Bass to our gallery. And um, we have so many interesting, beautiful things to show you. So um, enjoy it with us. Well, I thank Nancy for this wonderful and, opportunity. Uh, start right here and just tell us about them. We are uh, learning from you about a new artistic endeavor. So what these, is- These uh, are machine embroidered thread paintings. I start with a photograph and print the photograph through my computer onto fabric. Back the fabric with a stiff material like a canvas or a duck cloth and then stitch over the photograph with the sewing machine. When I was eight years old, I got a camera for Christmas, a little oh. Kodak Brownie. Oh. And it, it changed my life because I started seeing everything in little square compositions. And I think it, it brought out the artistic eye that I, that I never really lost that. I look around at the environment and see That's a sequence beautiful. of compositions. Beautiful. So I really, I really enjoy photography and a lot of these are, I, I play with the Photoshop before I end up printing them, but I like um, the street scenes. This. I like architecture. I, I like the, the lines that you get in uh -huh. just close up portions of architecture. I think this was a, a real gift having the window washer there right when I was on the street. Yes. Um, the colors in this, though, the shingles and, and this. I looked, really I looked at this and I first thought, I can't do that oh. because it was so detailed and shaded. But I find when I start the stitching, I start with the very dark and then the very light uh -huh. and then blend the mid shades in between. I see, I see. So well, it's very, very graphic and interesting. And the same with that. What what is that? That's a a, a dormer window oh. on the very top of a roof. Oh my gosh! And I just kind of like that little window up there. I call it room with a view. Ah. And this one, that's that was taken on uh, Market Street in York, Pennsylvania. This one is uh, a house I saw in Maine. Ah. And I was intrigued with the fact that they only painted one of the windows. Ah. So that's called one red window. But I like your branches and your uh, tree effect. Well, you go back and forth, changing colors. This, this is another street scene from York, Pennsylvania. I actually had to take two photographs uh -huh. because the side view didn't give me the words. Then I had to turn around and take the words on the front. They had, I love York City in the window. And you, and what's I, your relationship to York? Um, just that I, I live about an hour oh, west I and I'm often in York. My art association is, is in York. I see, I see. And I was walking up and down the street just looking for architectural designs. They have a lot of neat old buildings with all these interesting cornices on the top. So you have to see the detail in this, that with the thread is, is your color. And I go to Joann's when they have a half price thread sale. And I just go, one of every color goes uh -huh. into the basket. And they hate me at the checkout. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Because click, they click, have click, to click. scan every single one. The one on the top is an, an old vintage building in Hanover, Pennsylvania. Um, I actually, in that cupola part, uh, got my hair cut years and years ago where my hairdresser used to have a salon and my youngest child at eight months old had her first haircut there. <laughs> oh, very good. Never had a baby with as much hair as that kid. At a year old, she had a page boy that curled under with bangs. Wow, wow. This, this lighthouse is also from Maine. It's Marshall's Point Light. Uh, look and at I the, really liked all those the, Queen Anne's the, lace. Uh, what are those? Queen Anne's lace? Queen Anne's lace. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. I think it's close. And this is the Hanover Art Guild. 
I have open, it says open for business. I call it open for business. And I sure hope we do get open for business uh. soon. Uh, but the Texas Hot Wieners and the uh, Art Guild are there on uh, Carlisle Street in Hanover. These two windows were taken in France. These two windows were beautiful window boxes that I saw on a trip in France. Uh -huh. And I just loved seeing all these windows, doors and windows that had flowers it's around them. In boxes wonderful. next to the doors and in boxes under the windows. Were you at one place special? That I really I don't remember. I would have to look up where we were, but we started around Paris and went south. Oh, I see. So, uh, they are fabulous. I also found the, the cabbage really an interesting challenge to get all the ruffles and the color changes in the leaves. It's fun. Oh my gosh, it's so fun and to see. I do have a partially done one here, if uh -huh. you can see. I've taken my photograph printed it on fabric, stiffened the fabric, and put it under the sewing machine. This is not finished, but if you look at the back, you can see the bobbin threads. Uh -huh. And the bobbin threads are either white or black, uh -huh. but the colors on the front are in the hundreds. It's different when you do a thread painting versus paint because you can't mix your colors before you put them on the canvas uh -huh. the way you can with paint. Uh -huh. With thread, you have to mix by overlaying the colors. I see. So you're looking at what's coming out of the machine immediately then. To, right, but to... then if I, wanna, if I want to shade the color, uh -huh. I can't take the thread over here on the side and mix a little light with a little yeah. dark and change the color. I have to overlay with I a see. neighboring color. And that's I why see. I need to go through the Joann's and take <laughs> every single color in a color yeah. way so that I can sh shade by overlaying the neighboring colors. Well, it's most effective, really, really most effective. These pieces are felted. So I start with wool oh. roving, which is just loose, unspun wool. It's already dyed. So the color in here is already in the wool before mm -hmm. I put it into the picture. You don't wash it or no, I I buy it's I, I buy the no, it's already dyed. Uh -huh. So it's already colored. Uh -huh. But it's loose and puffy and unspun. Uh-huh. And you lay the wool down in layers, mm -hmm. color on top of color, and I also use yarn. If you can see these yeah. lines here, these are yarns, wool yarns that are laid down over the oh. the puff wool. So and you can beautiful. end up with a pile of puff wool that can be an inch or several inches high. Uh -huh. Then the wool is wet with soapy water, warm soapy water, and manipulated, you know, rolled or agitated. Wool is a really interesting fiber that has scales, and with heat and agitation, the fibers move over each other, the scales open up, and they lock in place. Oh my gosh. So, so, the, so the wool locks and shrinks in size. You already have the design. Not necessarily. No. Uh, it, it works as I, lay, as I lay the wool out. Fine. And after I felted that, I added the black buttons. Those are vintage glass German buttons. <laughs> And they all have different designs. I see. So if you look closely at the buttons, they're all different. Beautiful, beautiful. And this is a still life done in the same way. Uh, the, fell, the wool is laid out. And what I would do with this is partially felt the background uh -huh. and then add the flowers. I see. I and see. then complete the felting. I also like to stitch on the felted piece because I think it gives it definition and it gives it dimension. Certainly. And I have a piece here that has been felted, started with a, a light blue color, mm -hmm. added scenic things, trees, a, a, a bird of some unknown kind. 
I'll take this and back it with a piece of polyester felt. Uh -huh. Stitch this outlining the trees, outlining the bird, putting whatever definition I like. The polyester felt adds stability. It will prevent the wool from stretching and hold it in place and allow the little, the puffy areas to stand out. Well, do you buy the background then by the yard? Buy this I buy by the yard, uh -huh. but this background uh -huh. here uh -huh. is felted with wool roving. Okay, this again is similar where this one has accents uh -huh. of tiny little beads. Uh -huh. This one has accents of some silky curly uh, um, material. So you can add a lot of stuff into the wool to give it extra Not interest other a fabric other than wool or is mm. a, it, you, sometimes wool I wool. I've done some florals where I've cut the flowers out of silk that's been felted pre-felted oh. to wool and then you get flowers that have shiny petals gosh where did you learn wait a minute lots of workshops the great wall this is the great wall of China oh, and oh. I did um, before I had my knee replacement, uh, crawl with my cane up the Great Wall of China. And uh, I took some photographs and when I got home I felted this. And it has quite a bit of stitching on it. In the background. And these, have... these past three I've bound uh -huh. like quilts and they have quilt hangers on the back. Mm -hmm. But as an alternative to binding the felted pieces like a quilt, I also stitch them uh, to a painted canvas. So these, these are, this is Visions in Purple 1 and 2. I was only going to bring one, but I decided they needed to stay oh, together. Oh, absolutely, they're wonderful together. So I merged the purple colors, and these are, the, the colors are blended by overlaying very thin bits of wool into the neighboring color. Oh and again, it has yarns giving me the lines. And after I've pounded and felted it, I've stitched to outline the lines and emphasize the lines. And then I've hand stitched um, gemstone flowers onto here. The, this has flowers and the large ones are lace agates. The smaller ones are amethysts and carnelians. And you stitch them on. And they're they're stitch. stitched on by hand when I'm done. And then I stitch the entire piece to a uh, black painted artist canvas. And we've got in a, and we've got two more here. This was done by making a bunch of pre felts. And I actually did it in a group. We all made pre felts and traded them. Uh huh. So we got a variety of pre-felts pre from 10 different people. And when I put this together, I let the black background show through and it reminded me of stained glass. Wonderful. It's truly wonderful. So I, I see this, this, this to me has a, has a very spiritual uh, feeling because I feel like I'm in a cathedral. It has such depth, it really does. The next one is just it's a color and shape uh -huh. play, yeah. and uh, the, to me it's uh, like a waterfall. Uh -huh. There's if you look really close, there's a lot of little beading I with see. tiny little beads that to me are the cascading yes. water over a rock wall. And they pick up the light and sparkle. Beautiful, beautiful. But these are these are mostly just color play. This is wool as well. They, again, wool um, with the complementary flowers and the lines uh -huh. and the stitching. Beautiful. Wow. I so. love the wool pieces. I, I truly do. Well, I, I like I like fabric. I like thread. I like wool. I like uh, fiber. Has so many varieties and so many parameters that you can deal with yes. it's, it's hard to just limit yourself to one yes yes 
This is a very special piece. I call it stop signs. <laughs> my training is not in art. My training is in science. Uh -huh. I, I have a degree in microbiology. Uh -huh. And this piece called stop signs, I did on the computer where I made these octagons. Uh -huh. One, two, three, four, five, yes. <laughs> um, and put all the wording in the computer and then took it to a programmable embroidery machine and uh -huh. stitched out on the organza. Now, since the organza is see-through, uh -huh. Every time you go from one letter to another, you've got a jump stitch that has to be cut. Oh my goodness. On the organza, you've got to cut all the jump stitches on the back as well as on the front. Oh my goodness. These are all personal experiences that I've had uh -huh. growing up in the educational system <laughs> that were impediments to a girl studying science. Oh dear. Especially field science. Oh dear. Um, I was reported to women's council for having alcohol in the dorm when I took my dissection specimen back to the dorm to oh, study. Oh, you're kidding. Because they said that, that the bombing yeah. fluid came under the heading of oh, alcohol. alcohol. Which of course puts me at a disadvantage because all the frat guys had all their dissection specimens back in their dorm studying and I couldn't do that. Um, the the uh, field trips we went on deposited us at the cafeteria exactly at six o'clock. Uh -huh. Boys ran in and ate. Girls, we weren't allowed to eat in pants, but it was six o'clock and by the time we went back to the dorm put a skirt on, Dinner was closed. Well, anyway, that's just an example. Isn't that? If you'd like to come and read all the little I things. Know, I know, just reading it. <laughs> it oh, As I said, they're all that. personal experiences. That's sweet. That's sweet. And because I did do have a background in science, uh, and uh, when I couldn't get into field science, ecology, or, or oceanography, I uh, ended up in microbiology, which is a lab science. Mm -hmm and more acceptable to women in the 60s. I see. Um, these are microbes, dinoflagellates, that live in the ocean. I like the sparkly fabrics. Uh -huh. I, uh, my daughters were part of a performing company, so I have a, a, a backlog of dance costumes. dance costumes and dance fabrics because I did a lot of costuming for the uh, performing company and uh -huh. I, I I do like the sparkliness. This is also on a hand dyed silk background. Oh, beautiful. Okay. This piece is my commemorative uh, quilt for the 50th anniversary of the moon landing, and it is in the book Fly Me to the Moon. It was very interesting to do this because I got into it very late. So all the Apollo missions were gone, all the astronauts were gone, all the um, obvious moon references were taken. <laughs> but what I noticed was that was left was the Jimmy Buffett song that's the rocket that Grandpa wrote. And it's an, a tribute to Neil Armstrong. Oh, my goodness. And I find that I appreciate less is more when somebody else does it. But what I do is more is more, and if you can <laughs> stick more on top of that, go for it. So the incorporation of the lyrics of the song, The Rocket That Grandpa Wrote by Jimmy Buffett, goes everywhere from DNA uh, and the Wright Brothers to the Starship Enterprise. So you just let your mind Put, put all, all these the images together. from the lyrics of the song together. I see. Starting with steps, horses, yes. and there's Nero. Nero. <laughs> it's just beautiful. And I also included the sailing ship. I was talking to somebody who, whose parents or grandparents had known 
Jimmy Buffett's family and mm -hmm. said that his grandfather was a sea captain and told tales and that's where he learned ah, so the art of, of storytelling story that goes into his songs. But also, a lot of the references to Star Trek compare the space exploration with the great ships and the the exploration yes. of crossing the Atlantic from the old world to the new world. So, yes. so I found a, a grounding in putting that masted sailing ship in as well. It's really incredible. Which so you that know, was you that just want to look at it. I mean, I you know for you have you have to look up the lyrics to the song. To the song, uh -huh. to to uh, to understand all really? the placement, but it was a lot of fun to do, uh -huh. and I like a mental challenge. <laughs> well, then we come to the puppies. Well, we can talk all day. We can talk all day about the puppies. <laughs> this little guy here was mine. Uh -huh. His name was Apollo, and. Uh, this is his litter mate. Well, then we come to the puppies. These are Cavalier King Charles. Oh, they are. I Cavalier see. King Charles Spaniels. Mm -hmm. And I just, the, the idea that you can have a litter, and they're all different colors, and they're oh. all the same. And I mean, who cares what color they are? But these two brothers, to me, just, they, they, they're just so obviously connected. Yes. That I, I, put this on the quilt, emphasize the browns, and it says, we are all brothers, we are all brothers, we are all brothers under the skin. Do you have, did you have them? Did you own them, the puppies? The little black one, he was mine. And I just wanted to make a statement with that, that they're obviously so connected and the color of their skin doesn't matter. Yes, yes, absolutely. This microbiology <laughs> coming back out. It's called Protist Senior Prom. <laughs> and if you, I guess they've got this tape down. I won't take the back. But I have all the cast of characters, all the scientific names mm -hmm. embroidered onto the back of this. Uh -huh. But they're all in pairs, except there's some tri triples there. And there's a little sex going on. <laughs> some conjugation <laughs> as... The microbes do Are it. They in water. And, oh, yes, yes. Okay. These these would be uh, a, a, an aquatic uh -huh. scene. So pretty, pretty. Oh, but again, it's a hand dyed silk background and my dance fabrics. Uh huh. Again. And sparkly dance fabrics. Yes. 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 And these uh, are my microbes. They're microbes. Well. Yes. Uh, Volvox amoeba, Paramecium, Stentor. Um, Eucalinas, uh, just a, <laughs> a, a, a mix. Uh -huh. And they're so vivid and so vibrant. I, I mean, in, I want to look through the microscope. You know, that's the colors you see, <laughs> and you've captured it. Well, then this wall has smaller pieces. Uh -huh. um, some of them are just a little bit of fun. I have Lollipop Land, which is inspired by Hunter Wasser paintings. Uh, smaller felted piece with the carved stone flowers and yarns. Huh. This one, I didn't know what to do with it for quite a while because I, I had the, the yarns in there and then I had this big open space and I have a little lamp worked fish and some little uh, carnelian chips and uh, the butterflies. So I call that one sea and sky. I don't necessarily know what I'm going to do to finish the pieces until, until, until they're you're, done. You're motivated until the last minute. So we just move on. This is uh, raw silk uh, dyed with indigo, felted with wool, 
uh, stitched with yarns uh -huh. and this and this one the yarns are not felted in they're silk and they're stitched down oh. and I use the program stitches on the sewing machine to give it more texture and then use the carved stone flowers oh my gosh so and they're hand stitched on another fabric piece I call that one it hobbits head condos <laughs> Just, just playing. Uh -huh. More felted pieces. This one on the end is a little different. This piece is needle felted. All the rest of my felted pieces are wet felted, which means you take the roving, you lay it out, you pile it up, you wet it with warm soapy water and you agitate it. Uh -huh. And the agitation and the warm soapy water makes everything lock together. In this case, where are you doing this? On a, on a table. Table. Yeah, with lots of towels. Uh -huh. I see. <laughs> and plastic on the floor. <laughs> um, this piece is dry felted. In this method, method of felting called needle felting, Instead of wetting and agitating, you use a needle, and the needles do not have an eye in them like you think of a needle. They have barbs at the end. Oh. And as you poke the needle back and forth into the wool, the agitation of the needle barbs is what locks the wool fibers together. So wool is laid on and then it's poked. And wool is laid on and it's poked. Oh. And after you get everything where you want it, you poke it, poke it, poke it, poke it, poke it forever uh -huh. until it's a solid um, piece of work. But wisteria does mean something to me because my grandparents had a big yard in the back and they had wisteria vines. And we'd get together with all the cousins and we'd go out and we'd cut off the wisteria vines and we'd chase each other around. Oh. <laughs> and so Cute. I planted yes. some wisteria at home and my husband hates it because he has to trim it or it gets up under the roof. Yes, yes it does. Um, but I, so, I yeah. like it. I mean, I, I, do, I do like wisteria. I do have a felted wool vessel, which is felted up with layers of changing colors and then cut back in so that you can see the different colors of the underlying layers. Oh, and this is felted over a ball, which is then deflated to pull the ball out. Of course. Oh, it's magnificent. Can you get it around a little bit, shall we? There. Oh. Did you have so much fun doing this? This was fun. But I find I'm getting arthritis in my hands uh -huh. and I can felt the flat pieces, but felting the sculptural pieces is getting beyond the ability of my hands to manipulate. It's really, really unique. But I do, I do have to then draw your attention to the beadwork uh -huh. because I do quite a bit of beadwork. Um, this piece was done for the Fiber Art Guild of Pittsburgh. Several years ago, they did a benefit where they produced decks of playing cards where each, um, each, the face of each card was done by a different fiber artist. This is the Six of Clubs, and it shows three sets of nightclub dancers <laughs> from the Charleston to swing to disco. Oh my God. And it was, it was very interesting to do because since it's a playing card and since it's clubs, I had to keep it to the black uh -huh. colorway. So uh -huh. it's black and blue and neutrals. And I reversed it. So you've got three figures upright and three figures upside down because that's the way playing that's cards are. You can turn it. Absolutely. I also had to be very careful since I knew that it was going to be photographed only this big to keep my contrast high. Yes. So that every time there's a light 
part in the figure, the background is dark. And where the background, where the figure is dark, the background is light. So it took a lot of thought, and actually it took me almost a year to do this to piece. Do that. As far as beadwork goes, this is quite large. It's 12 by 19 inches. Really stunning. And you can look at it on either side because it's all bead stitched to bead. There's no fabric involved. It has wire around the edge to help it maintain the shape, but the, the size was part of the description of what the project needed to be. Uh -huh. I am overwhelmed. It's just gorgeous. So this has stolen your heart beadwork. Ah, uh, yes. Look so at this then we have slipper. Yes. From, from my dance era, I beaded a ballet shoe and the ribbons, which copy the shape of the leg, uh -huh. have the names of princesses in ballets. We have Cinderella, uh -huh. Titania, uh -huh. Juliet, Scheherazade, Aurora, the Sleeping Beauty, Clara from the Nutmeg, Nut, yeah, Nutcracker. <laughs> um, if you know anything about beadwork, the shoe itself is done in right angle weave. You cannot stitch to the shoe because if you if you know anything about point shoes, this is a solid block of wood yes, down here yes. that, that the shoe is glued to. Yes. So the beadwork comes up around the edge and is attached at the bottom so, right next to the leather and then attached here around the binding. So do you do the beadwork individually on the shoe or do you do it? No, I do it I do it on the sh on the shoe. I started right here at the back uh -huh. next to the leather uh -huh. and I was able to pick up a little bit of the satin and stitch a row of beads. And then from then on, it's beads stitched to previous beads. Until I get to the top where I stitch it back into the shoe. And your colors are yummy. Color, sh color shading is what I do. You can look at the threads, mm -hmm. you can look at the felt, uh -huh. you can look at the fabric, you can look at the beads. What I do is color shading. It, nobody can teach you that. That is an innate talent, I think. That is so much fun. I could look at it all day. I, I did some painting for a while. I was in a group of people. We got together every Thursday night and we painted. And periodically we would pay an instructor to come in and critique our work. Mm -hmm. And I don't have any art training. I don't have any art background. Um, one of these instructors that came in looked at my pieces and he said, you have the eye. If you'd had any training, you could have been good. Oh. <laughs> and it's like, beg your it's like, <laughs> wait a minute. Is that a compliment or is yeah. that not? A <clears throat> I didn't know whether to say thank you Absolutely. or hide my head. It, it was um, a compliment and but, he should have uh, hushed at that point. It, it, and it, and it, then, of course, we have the tap shoe, mm -hmm. which has words in it, step, stamp, stomp. And they call that tap soul, spelled S-O-U-L, because mm -hmm. the essence of tap dancing is the soul of the shoe. Oh, this has been a phenomenal afternoon. I, I feel transformed your your abilities to go from one art phase to another to another to this is is unbelievable thank you joanne so oh, much thank and you for the opportunity to show